Babs. Yay. Okay. So what was your biggest takeaway from yesterday's session? And it was not on easy and beginner collabs. It was on affiliate programs. What was your biggest takeaway? Go ahead and pop it in the chat, if you will. And maybe we'll take like two or three shares if somebody wants to come off and let us know, um, you know, how mind blowing it was for you. Don't be shy. And or you could tell us your next big move in with your affiliate program or your or becoming an affiliate for others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're not ready to talk yet. Okay. Meg, what are you seeing in the chat? Anything? Oh, Courtney. Super exciting? Courtney, was yes. that an invitation? Oh, the invitation. Let me repeat the invitation. We will take two or three shares. What is your biggest takeaway from the conversation on affiliate programs yesterday or working in the workbooks? Anything that you digested yesterday from our conversation? You blew me away with your directory and the way you were able to connect people instantly. Not only Courtney and your Zog looking at people and connecting them lightning, but then going into the directory and looking for people that were similar to and looking at each person and said, how might that person be a collab in any mm -hmm. way, shape or form? That's not even a thought I ever would have had. So you created the thought, you showed me how to do it, you gave me the tool to do it so I could go do it. And then like some really cool people who are doing really cool things that I love and I think could be a part of or my clients could use theirs. So all of a sudden this whole world that didn't exist now exists because of what the two of you did. So that mm -hmm. was kind of a little takeaway. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. That is so good to hear that it's useful. And just so you all know, like we are constantly conversating about how to improve the directory. So there's some search functionalities that we are currently improving. So it'll only get better and better as we learn and grow with it as well. Another share? I'd love to hear from, from Lizzie because I saw her in the in the Facebook group today and connecting with Tracy and I was like, oh, I feel like Lizzie's really enjoying herself. So Lizzie, any chance you'd come off mute and tell us how you're going? Sure, absolutely. So I just a little backstory. I've been following Meg for years and she actually emailed the other day and was like, you keep buying things from me, but I feel like I'm not helping you do things because I just, but I am like, I just love Meg and so this, I'm a connector and I'm also a wanderer who does all kinds of little things. And so having the permission, so first, the first day, Tracy said something that was basically like, you know, do the things, do all the things, because we're always told to fit in these boxes, right? And everyone this week has had a moment where even in the asynchronous trainings where they're like, yeah, I don't do that, even though they tell you to have a guarantee or they tell you to do one pr product or they tell, and every one of them has had this moment where they're like, yeah, I don't do that part. I know that's what the book says, but I don't follow the book. And so having permission to just be, exist and connect with people and figure it out from there. Like I have been part of Collaboration Station for since it started. And there's always a fear like, oh my gosh, these people have it all together. But every one of them has been like, I started simple. I made all the mistakes. I was afraid for seven bajillion years before I did anything. And then I just did it. And then I figured it out. And I love connecting with people. Like if connecting with people was a class, I could teach that, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Consider doing it. Right. <laughs> so, um, we're always looking for interesting masterclasses, Lizzie. Feel free to come in and run one. Make little friends. That's going to be, I'll be like a brownie, <laughs> um, brownie scout. So yeah, no, I just, this is really connected all of the pieces of all the things I've ever done with Meg ever in the history of the world in a really important way by taking out all the excuses. Um, we're all doing things that maybe fit together in weird ways that we never thought about. And um doesn't matter if you've been in business for 13 years and are just now collaborating, like 
and identifying that we probably all have collaborated in other ways before and all of those things are powerful and this has been a great week yeah and I won a prize like what, what <laughs> else is there to say yeah uh, oh that was delightful thank you thanks Lizzie and you and I should collab because I, I would like to just make my perma career just let's just connect all right are we ready to dive in? Unless somebody really is ready to share again. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so I expanded our definition thanks to Scott. Okay, but if anyone who doesn't know, Scott is a master at messaging, but it's more than that. <laughs> He's a master at truth telling um, and whole finding. This is this is my my version of you, Mac, um, Scott, right now. So truth truth telling whole finding and pushing you towards your gifts in the kindest, most gentle way with true sincerity. So if you have a chance, hang out with Scott. Um, how to, we're here today to talk about how to build great relationships and learn the basics so that you can grow your list with less effort in order to scale your business in less than 90 days without social media or paid ads. I improved that one a little bit. Scott, and I have more to go, more to go, but that's, we're getting there. Okay. So what we've done so far, the collab ascension model. So now we know sort of where you are on those four stages. My guess is that by now that might've even shifted for some of you and yay, if it has, we talked about the five most popular collab strategies. Um, you're in for a treat tomorrow because Meg's going to kind of go back into that a little bit, but focus on the ones that have been successful for her. So you're going to hear her journey. Uh, we talked about easy and beginner collabs. So that's, you know, if you have nothing to start with, what you can do to start connecting with other business owners today to make the business world a less lonely place. We also talked about affiliate jumpstarting, both becoming an affiliate and starting your own affiliate program. And today we're going to talk about content best practices for your business and for collabs. So what you've gathered so far, lots of prizes, hopefully, uh, show up bonuses including the day one through three workbooks, the bundle prep task list and template, uh, the summit prep checklist, and there's more coming today. Also lots of new ideas for collabs and hopefully a better roadmap and a ton of new friends. Today's talk, we're gonna do some prizes once again, and then we have guest expert Candace Davies of Your Social Funnel, and she's going to present on how to use social media effectively to support your collabs. So think like affiliate promos, basically everything you need to do to collab involves some level of promotion um, and how to also sell your own offers better using those strategies. We're also going to talk about prepping your content for collabs and maybe she'll talk about making your profiles profitable for future collab opportunities. All right. I think everyone here has already met us. Is that true, Meg? We don't need to introduce no, ourselves. Or no, you'll just. Uh, well, that is the question. That um, that person. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, we're going to skip over us so we can get to the juice. We've got prizes today. All right. So if you've completed your homework by 10 AM, um, we have a prize number one, affiliate marketing mastery. Now this is Lydia Martin's creation. And this is the behind the scenes of Lydia's passive income blueprint. For anyone who was here yesterday, Lydia is incredible and shared with us her honest journey of starting out to scaling and where she is today. And I consider Lydia in the big collab category, even though I think she put herself in three. That's just not true. Uh, prize two is a done for you joint venture webinar designer presentation slides packet. And prize three is a customized designer affiliate welcome kit. Okay, these will be created for you. We have like an intake form that you fill out and these will be then created for you and digested in the number of days. All right, let's do it. Let's do our lovely wheel. And I've added, Santhil, I've added him twice because I missed him yesterday. So I wanted to make up for that. And then I have removed the folks who already won. Okay, because you 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 all can still be in the grand prize drawing, but I have removed you for um, the drawing today, just to be fair. So now we have a quite small pool to work with. Any chance right, we get so a wheel we... with sound, Courtney? 
let's try one more time. See if my, my Mac. So for Meg, remember when my, my last Mac completely died. And then I had to like very quickly, I was sitting in front of the Apple store and it crashed. I'm not even kidding. I was like 20 yards from it. So this new version means that everything is asking me to update things and the whole nine yards. So, um, hold on one second, please. Just something happened. All right, here we go. So there's no sound. I'm sorry. All right, please tell me you're seeing the wheel. We are seeing the wheel. All right, so right here I've got Shelby, Scott, Monica, Cheryl, Karen, or Karen, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Santhil, Mangla, Lizzie, Rosemary, and I misspelled you your name. Take me off. Who take am I taking? Off, take me off. Oh, because you already won. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I won. Okay. Oh, very kind of you to admit that. Rosemary, Ann, and April. All right, here we go. So this is prize number one. This is the Affiliate Marketing Mastery. Yay, Karen, Karen, what do you think? Does anyone know how to pronounce that name? Karen, I know it's Karen. You know it's Karen? Okay, good. Well, I kind of assumed, but you never know. Okay, I'm removing you, Karen. So that's super exciting. You're gonna love that. Let's go to next person. All right, so this is for the joint webinar designer presentation slides. Oh, thank goodness he won something. <laughs> <laughs> After I really messed that one up. <laughs> okay, yay, Cynthia won the um, designer presentation slides. That's fabulous. All right, now. Okay, so I'm gonna do I Meg technical question. Do I leave his name? Because he won, I take it out, yeah? I both can of take them. It out. Okay. All right, just to be fair. Okay. We want the maximum people to get something out of this. All right, last one, customized designer affiliate welcome kit. Shelby. Woohoo. I forgot to write the names down. I had one job to do. Oh god. Okay. Karen was the first. Karen was the first. Cynthia was the second. Okay. And Shelby is the third. Okay. Got it. Okay, y'all. Great. Thank you for participating in that. All right. And whoops. Presentation skills 101. All right. <clears throat> Remember this handy dandy. So what do all of these have in common on the CoLab Ascension model? What do all of these stages have in common? I thought a lot about this, right? Cause I'm like, how can I connect this conversation today? What they all have in common is visibility offers, partnering, going big. They all will require promotions and cross promotions. Okay, which we know equals a lot of content. Uh, so if you're if you're not doing it the right way, you'll likely feel like this, which is why we're bringing in Candace today. Candace Davies is the founder of Your Social Funnel, and Candace helps coaches, creators, consultants to build a profitable online business through social platforms. Uh, Candace has a program called Profitable Profiles Program, and I've been a part of it so far, and it's incredible. Candace is also an Instagram queen. Uh, so back in the day, let's see, what was that even a year and a half ago, Candace? I was trying to figure out Instagram. You know, you think for my age, I don't know, Meg, you too, like we're seeing people dance on Instagram and TikTok and all of this. And I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. Like, how do I do this in a way that's meant for me? Well, I, I found out that Candace was the Insta queen and I'm like, Candace, I need your help. And I was a part of a um, beta program that Candace was running at the time. It was absolutely phenomenal. I got my Instagram going. I then ended up like, I didn't have enough hand. I needed to stay with her basically and just get like a year more of hand holding because I, I'm that bad at it. Um, and I didn't, but she went on to do amazing things with it and is helping a ton of people. Also from South Africa and mom of three, correct? Candace, do I have that number correct? I think so. All right. Yeah, so let's try. Right. Okay, good. Well, we're going to let you take it away now. So please, please, please. Come on out and here's Thank Candace you. Davies. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be invited. Uh, I read all these like nice things about me and I was like, oh my God, 
Meg's telling everyone I'm so funny. What happens if I'm not funny? And uh, Courtney's like, all these, like, I'm, a, I'm the Instagram queen. And they're all going to go look at my Instagram and be like, she doesn't even have a lot of followers. <laughs> okay, but I've been so busy making content for everybody else. You know how it goes. We, like, neglect ourselves. and But anyway. Um, so when, when Courtney reached out and she was like, do you want to come speak? I was like, well, anyone who knows me knows that speaking is not a problem. I can speak and speak and speak forever. Of course, I want to come and speak. Um, but I kind of like didn't know how to take everything that I'm currently busy with and what I see working and how am I going to make it really fit for what everybody here is doing in, in Colab Station. So I think that what I want to share with everybody today, Courtney, is it okay? Can I share my screen? Yeah, you um, should be able to. And there we go. Okay, so let's bring this across over here. Um, and let's see here. Okay, let's see over here. So I kind of just wanted to present my brain works with simplicity. Like I have three children. Uh, I feel like a headless chicken pretty much most of my life. So I, I need things to be really simple. Um, because I don't I don't like feeling overwhelmed and chaotic. And so over the last couple of years, working with one like one on one, mainly in one on one in a one on one capacity with business owners, I started developing this idea in my mind. Um, about like this framework that would be so helpful for online business owners that's really simple that you could slot your business into thinking about like what are the components that as online business owners we need to be thinking about and have our eyes on and that all of these components kind of like need to talk to each other so just for a little bit of context I thought let me just start by contextualizing this framework that I've been thinking in and if it's helpful for you, that that would that's amazing. If not, you know, take it or leave it. But I developed this idea of these five elements, these five really important elements that an online business owner can like slot their business into, and that all of these zones, like I call it the five zone formula, all of these zones talk to each other all the time. So if you just look over here, like there's base camp. There's your logistics hub. And then basically you need something where it's like, well, how am I going to get eyes on what I do? How am I going to actually like sell my offers, my services? So how am I going to grow my business? How am I going to make money in my business? And then how am I going to track things so that I actually know <laughs> it's working? So I developed this idea of this five zone formula and that each of these zones would be constantly communicating with one another. Uh, because I had also noticed that like, and me included in the beginning that like I was thinking about everything like, okay, I've got Kajabi over here and then I've got my social media over here and my email list and like everything felt quite separated rather than this like system that was constantly communicating and in touch with, with one another. And then I thought, okay, so like what's at the heart of our businesses. And so, you know, I, I did Meg and Kimmy's Heart Centered Apprentice and everybody's so passionate. All the business owners that I've come into contact with are so passionate about what they do and like they really feel this is their purpose. They wanna help and serve people. And that is so amazing. So like at the heart of our businesses, there's passion and purpose, but there's also profit right because again just like reflecting on my own experience I was sometimes blinded by my own passion like I had this idea and I was so convinced it was going to work and I just wanted to help people and sometimes the passion I felt was like enough it was going to just save the day if I just cared enough and helped enough the money was going to come and maybe some of you can relate but like you can't survive without money so if your business is not profitable, that's a problem. Your business cannot survive. Like you can't go on to scale, get a team, do all the things that you hear all the big people are doing. You can't do that without money. 
And so I, I kept coming back to these five zones and that at the heart of it, of course, there's passion and purpose, but I wanted to help my clients just train their brains to start thinking like, okay, that's great. I know you love what you do, but like, are you making money? Like, is this offer working? Like, are you profitable? Okay, so that's kind of a bit of context where this idea came from. And you might be thinking, okay, that's great, but like, let's just get on to it. Tell me how to make social media content. I'm going to do that. But this lays the foundation and you're going to see how it all comes together. So we're going to start off by how do you sell your own offers? And the zones that, that we talk about when it comes to thinking about your own offers, products and services is the first zone, which is base camp. And the third zone, which is what is my growth strategy? Okay, and we're going to go into that just a little bit, yeah. So the first zone, I was thinking about like, okay, so what when it, you know, the analogy, Courtney will know this analogy, my, the, the people that have been working with me a little bit are so sick of it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So I went through this phase where I was like binge watching these documentaries on Netflix of like all these mountaineers, like I, don't ask me how I even got into it. I was watching, like, I got completely hooked on, like, this, this earthquake that happened in, in Nepal. And, but people were, like, on the mountain. And then, and then they were climbing Everest. And then, and then I started watching one after the other. I was, like, down this rabbit hole of mountaineering, okay? But I actually thought to myself, it's such a good analogy for our businesses. Because no one thinks to themselves, you know what? Like, I want to climb Everest. And then books a ticket, land, flies over there, gets to base camp and says, okay, so what do I do, right? We have to do like a little bit of training. You've got to make sure that you're fit enough. You've, you've kitted yourself out with the gear you're going to need to do this climb. And once you've prepped yourself and you get to base camp, you know, that's where the journey kind of officially begins, so even though this five zone formula speaks about the five zones, there's actually a little bit of work that we've got to do before we land in base camp. But essentially, base camp is where I like to think about, like, who is your niche? And I know, like, I love what Lizzie was saying, because Lizzie, I'm going to say it as well. Like, I know lots of people say, you must niche down, you must niche down so much that you're just speaking to one person with one, but I don't do that, okay? So I don't do that. I'm like, all right, I know I can't be speaking to everybody, but I am going to be speaking to like a broad group of people, okay? So I'm not going to like niche down to its very finest subset just yet. I just need an idea of like, who am I talking to? So I'm talking to online business owners who are who are wanting to monetize their social platforms they want to make sales through their social platforms maybe they're doing it already and they want to do it more or maybe they're struggling and they're not able to yet convert but it's something about social media social marketing and online business owners and there's like a want or a struggle there that's kind of who I'm talking to that's my niche in its broadest terms and then I thought about okay so I live in Africa. If anyone's ever been to Africa, Meg was with us recently. We went on safari. We speak about, you see the big five, right? So like the, these five animals that are like the big five, then you know you've like had a success, a successful safari. But I was thinking in, in our niches terms, like what is our niches or your audience's big five? Okay, in other words, what are the five top complaints, challenges, pain points, problem areas, right? The top five. Okay, now I know everyone's like, but they're more than five. Like, no, I know. I know. We're just starting off here. So just start with the top five, okay? And write them down. What are those top five problems that your niche in the broadest terms is going to be having a problem with, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the big five and you're going to you're going to write down in their words how are they describing those problems okay because a lot of the time again like i'll be scrolling on instagram and i'll see a piece of content um if there are any yoga teachers in the house 
you'll definitely know what I'm talking about because I've seen this post like all over the place and it says like, is your nervous system overstimulated? Watch this, you know, or read this. And I'm like, scroll past, I scroll past because I, I come home at the end of the day and I'll say things to my husband like, oh my God, I'm like so frazzled and the kids are being too loud and I just want to lock myself in a room and be quiet and like, I just... I feel like everything's too much. The music is too much. The lights outside, like there's too much advertising. It's just like too much, right? What, what I am describing is an overstimulated nervous system, but I don't come home at the end of the day and at supper, sit across from my husband and say, God, babe, my nervous system is so overstimulated. You know, I don't say that, okay? That's how we as business owners, because we are immersed in the material, in the topic, in the subject, and we're passionate, and right? In the beginning, I said we're also passionate about it. That's how we understand it, but it's not how people speak, okay? So we need to develop this ability, and, I, and this is like this phrase that I've been saying over and over again, is that EQ is the currency of conversion. And so it's a skill we have to develop. If you want your content to be watched to be like, it stops the scroll, it catches someone's attention, the more you can start describing things the way your people are talking about them, the words they're using, the analogies they use, you're just kind of speaking like an everyday person, I'm one of you, I totally get it, that's the stuff that gets people to stop and read, right? And this exercise that we do, we say, okay, they are saying one, two, three, four, five. We're describing the big five in their words. And then we take it a step further. In the next column, we say, I know it's because, and you slot in as the business owner, what you know is the reason the person is saying this, right? So if I take my own business, for example, I can tell you one thing that I hear that is in my big five is social media doesn't work. I haven't got one lead from it. Those are literally the words people have said to me, okay? I might then say, that's what they're saying. I know it's because they don't have a social marketing strategy. And so they're not sure what kind of content to make and what content converts well. Okay, so can you see the difference between getting into kind of an EQ writing and then as a business owner? So base camp, we're looking at like, who's your audience in its broadest terms? What are their big five? How are they describing it? How do you understand why it's happening? And then importantly, and I cannot even tell you guys how many people I've worked with that are really successful business owners. They're not brand new to the space. They've been doing it for a while, but there's something off about the big five and then the offer that they have that they're trying to link it to. So I always say, look at the big five, okay? So if people are describing like, every time I put a cake in the oven, it flops, or my souffles are coming out and there's a conk in the middle, or they are describing those problems, okay? And then your offer is something like, how to bake a lasagna. Okay. Like, yeah, okay, it is about cooking, but it's not speaking about what the big five are. So. There's no alignment, right? Of course you can't sell. No one's going to sign up because you're talking about something in your content. So you're saying, is your souffle flopping every time you put it in? And then they watch this piece of content and they're like, yes, she's, she's got it. And then they go check out something on your website, but now you're speaking about lasagnas. And they're like, oh, no, this isn't what I'm looking for, right? So there's something off about what your content is speaking about and then the offer that you're trying to link it to. So in Basecamp, we look at all of this stuff and we just make sure, like, do you know what the big five is? Do you know how to describe it in the words people are actually saying? Do you know why it's happening? And then if you're going to offer a solution, is that solution aligned with, with what the problems are? Okay, I know this sounds so, like, this is common sense, Candice, but actually I found that it's incredible when you just do this exercise. Sometimes these real light bulbs go off, which is like, oh my gosh, I've been speaking about this, but my offer has nothing to do with what I'm talking about on social media. Okay, 
I hope everybody's with me. I can only see four faces on my screen, but okay. So we, we kind of look at our base camp. We make sure like, all right, so we know who we're speaking to and we know what their big five is. And yes, I've got an offer that actually aligns perfectly with what their problems are, right? Now we've got to decide, okay, whew, how am I now going to get eyes on me? Like, how am I going to get people to know I can help? So even though I know Courtney and Meg's like, yeah, she's like, social media, social media. I do love social media, but I don't think it's the only way to grow. So you have choices in your business, you know. Are you going to use a social media platform or a social growth platform? So something like YouTube, or are you going to write a blog or, you know, something that has keywords and SEO? Like how and where are you going to place your content, right? That's one option. So you could go social media, kind of like evergreen content, YouTube kind of style. You could decide not like not for me at the moment. I'm going to focus all my energy on growing my list and I'm going to get my content out through my emails. Totally, absolutely. That is a growth strategy. So you could do it through your email marketing. And then what Meg and Courtney have put together in this amazing like, okay, no, I think I'm going to focus on collabs and partnerships. Maybe I'm going to do a combination of all those things. Okay, so you kind of get your, your ducks in a row. Like, I know who I'm talking to. I know what their problems are. I know how they're describing their problems. I understand why they're having these problems. And my offer actually can help with those problems. And now I've made up my mind. Like, I've got some idea on, like, okay, how I'm now going to try and get in front of people. I'm either going to do it on a social media platform, a social growth platform, through my emails, collabs and partnerships, and maybe a little bit of all of that. Okay. Right. So now all of that's kind of, we've got these ideas floating around. And then the next thing I wanted to explain is that if you're having a problem where you're like, okay, cool, but I'm doing all of that. And like my content is still not working, Candace, why is it not working? So I want to, and I really hope this is helpful, um, I want to explain to, to you guys that in your audience, there are two kinds of people that are gonna be in your audience, okay? The first kind of person is the person that is ready to buy, okay? And I, and I actually recently made a reel about this where I was like, we wish, right? Admit this, we wish our whole audience was this person. And I think sometimes we actually think it is this person. It's like, they've been following you for a while, they know you, they like you, they trust you, or they've been searching for someone like you for a while, Maybe you've run some paid ads and so your profile's popped up or someone's recommended you. Oh my God, have you heard about Meg? Oh my God, so I go check out Meg and I'm like, yes, this is the person I've been looking for but didn't know how to find, right? They are the people that are ready to buy, okay? It's two to three percent of the audience, okay? So the either 97 to 98 percent are people that are not really sure if you're the person they want to buy from or if they want to buy or if they're ready to buy, okay? And I feel like if you just look at what's happening, even over the last year, you know, when Courtney did my Instagram course a year ago and Meg was joking in her email that, yeah, she, you know, she made me lip sync. True, That is the truth. I did. Um, but, the, but it's evolving. Content is evolving in the way people are using platforms are evolving all the time. And so is our audience. And so I feel like what is happening now is our audience is, is really actually what they've wisened up. Like people are willing to invest a bit of time and effort into sussing out what their options are. Like before they're going to enroll in a course, they're looking around, they know a little bit, they've probably done some research. So they kind of not impulsive buyers, right? In COVID, everyone was like, I don't know about you guys, I like amassed a digital collection of courses that like, I don't even think I've made my way through even a quarter of them, right? It was like everyone was buying courses and I do feel like a bit of that novelty is worn off and our audiences are just wiser. Like they're willing to invest a little bit of time in researching and watching and deciding whether or not you are actually the person they are going to trust and give their money to. So 
we need to understand if there are two people in our audiences, we've got to have kind of content strategies that would work for these kinds of people. So if you're always in launch mode, right? So a lot of online business coaches are always talking about like launching, launching your offer, opening your doors to your membership, you know? And for a long time, I was like, is this the only way online business owners do business? Like, do they only ever launch? Or like, how do they make enough money for the rest of the year if they're only opening their doors like twice a year? And then, oh my God, do the maths on that. Like, how much money do you have to make to take you through? It just like blew my mind. And so actually, I don't think it's sustainable for small business owners to only have a launch campaign for their businesses, right? You have to have some kind of offer that you are constantly pushing content towards that is nurturing the person that is not yet convinced. Either about you, like they don't really know you well enough to know that you are the one, or they're not convinced about your offer, or they're just kind of watching and lurking a bit. So we need to have content that attracts and grows our audience and develops awareness. Now, when I say awareness, a lot of people think I mean like problem awareness. I mean, there is an element of that where if you like go into that whole buyer's journey where people know they've got a problem or they don't know they've got a problem. And, but I mean more like teaching people about you, like your way of thinking, your methods, your techniques, your personality, making them aware of what's in your program, how you how you frame things, how you help, right? So you you kind of taking down the barrier to entry, which is, I don't really know what I'm actually buying. You know, like, okay, she's constantly posting all the social proof and people say she's amazing and da, da, da. But like, I don't actually know much about the course. Like, what, what am I getting into? And so when your content is geared towards actually lowering that, which is like, I'm going to teach you about my framework. I'm going to show you how I think. I'm going to teach you the analogies. I'm going to not hold back. I really want you to know when you're buying what you're getting into, growing an awareness of your flagship message, like who you are, what makes you different, all that stuff people are always talking about. But also really growing a connection with this audience, growing a connection. They feel like they can trust you, they get you, you're invested in them as well, you know, that you're making content that is directly speaking to that big five. Okay. So that is indirectly leading to this evergreen offer that you might have, like a course that's always open or a mini course or a video series or something that people can just get into your world with. And then for the people that are ready to buy, you know, we've got content that grows our bank accounts. And so it's the direct sales, like I'm looking for five people, I've got five openings this month, I can do this, or you're launching something like a Black Friday sale and you're like directly asking for the sale, right? Okay, so if we've got two people in our audience, we need two kinds of content strategy. And if we're making content that is in that EQ is the conversion, the, the currency of conversion, you are speaking to those problems in their words, your content has got a really good chance of being watched, viewed, shared, you're going to get messages around like how, when does this, oh, you know, how can I get in? How can I work with you? It's going to convert. Okay. If owned out, come back, right? Come back. We're nearly there. Because now we're going to talk about how then do you sell other people's offers, right? Because guys, the truth is I find, I really do find if you, if you're struggling to sell your own offers, if you don't understand what your audience is struggling with, where they're battling, how to get them engaging with content that's going to help them. How on earth are you going to sell someone else's offer? Okay, so I think the, the a great place to start is by practicing with your own content. Now, if we're speaking about selling someone else's offer, right? So we've got base camp. We have to know our audience. We have to know what our audience is struggling with. Why? Because you're going to be promoting someone else's offer to your audience, okay? So you have to understand, number one, is there an alignment with the person whose offer you're actually trying to promote to your audience, right? So you've got to know your base camp. You've got to know your growth strategy. Where are you putting the content out? 
And then thinking about things like affiliate partnerships and collabs, okay, would be something that falls under your revenue strategy. Like, how am I going to make money in my business? Okay, of course, remember, I never ever want to sound like it's just about the money, because at the heart of this, there's also the passion and the purpose, which is if I know my audience is struggling in an area, I want to bring someone in that can help them there, right? It's not just about making money. It's about, does this fit in my customer journey? So what I would suggest is you go and you look at your big five. What is my audience's big five, okay? And what is my offer? Is there alignment with that? And then what you're going to do, and I know Courtney like loves this because she talks to me all the time about this. You're going to map out that customer journey, right? You're going to think about your person like, okay, so they're struggling with this. What would be the first thing that they would need to do? What would be the next thing they would need to do? So you're going to literally map out like, what does this look like for this person? If they were coming into your world if they were learning, where would they start? Where would be a good place to start? And when they finish that and they've solved one of the big five, does another problem pop up? And if another problem pops up, do you have an offer for that problem? And if not, do you know someone? Have you connected with someone who does have an offer that could help? So the first thing I do is I look at what is my big five, my audience's big five, and what is my offer? And then I map out the customer journey, right? I then think to myself, well, you know, at this point, we're talking about zone two. We're speaking about logistics. We're speaking about things like branding. We're speaking about things like platform choice, email provider. We're speaking about all this stuff. Do I have anything in my collection of digital products that I could add on that would be really helpful for my people? And if I do, great, I'm going to add that in over here because I actually have something that can help. But if I don't, right, now I can start thinking for my person, my audience, in their customer journey, if I don't have something to help them, is there someone I could reach out to and say, you know what, like, Gail, Gail, you've got this brilliant mini course on how to help people discover who is their audience, who's their niche, and what's their pain point, right? Right. My people are really struggling with this. What about if we offered your, your AR course here as like something that could help them, right? Because that would make sense for my customer. That would make sense for my client. Um, do I have an affiliate that I could say, you know what? You've got here, now we're in zone two. We're speaking about logistics and this person's like, yes, I'm in. I want to do Kajabi. Do you know anyone that can teach me how to use Kajabi? Well, yes. Yes, I do. Her name is Meg Burridge. Here we go. You can go get hold of her. She's got this whole hero collector that teaches you from A to Z. And I said, it is an aligned affiliation, right? Because I find that a lot of the time, if you're going to be promoting other people's stuff to your audience, we have to think about if there is an alignment for where your people are and whether or not this offer actually makes sense for them. So guys, that would be my tip. Like Courtney was saying, can I speak a little bit to, well, now you've got to create all this content, you know? And um, again, I think that if you are following this idea of, well, there are two people in my audience, okay? And so my one strategy is knowing that the majority of my audience isn't really sure yet. They're not, they're not, they're not ready to buy it. And so the majority of my work is always this ongoing content, right? So if I'm always speaking about my five zone formula and I'm always speaking about recurring themes, it's not going to be out of the blue if like Meg is suddenly promoting, she's opening doors to something. And I mentioned, guys, you know, I'm always telling you about Kajabi and how much I love Kajabi and it's the best platform X, Y, Z. And I have a friend of mine who's actually at the moment opening doors into her course so the content court, you know, it doesn't feel for me like a lot of work if I've been intentional about who my affiliates are, because I'm already doing the work. It's already like almost built into my content strategy. So if a course creator doesn't provide 
or a call an online business owner who, is, who I'm an affiliate for doesn't provide swipe files and graphics and all of that kind of stuff, I could go do it myself, create the own gra- my own graphics. But I could also, if it's if it's feeling organic and it's built into my customer journey, it doesn't feel like a lot of work for me personally. If I'm talking about it all the time, anyway, so. I do think when it comes to affiliates, the thing that I would think very carefully about in collabs is, does it make sense for your people? Like knowing who your niche is in its broadest terms, knowing what the big five are, knowing what your offer can help with and knowing what your offer cannot help with and then finding partnerships that slot into that, like just like a puzzle piece. You know, it's like, I don't want to go sit and now start building our templates. And But I do know someone who does do that. And it would be a great value add for my course here. So when it comes to affiliations and then selling other people's stuff, I do feel like a lot of the groundwork for me personally is, am I, have, I, have I been able to sell my own stuff? Have I got a strategy where I'm always talking? And again, guys, it doesn't have to be social media. This could be done through your email list. You know, you could be nurturing through an email list all the time. So wherever it is that you're growing, if you've been nurturing and growing your people, when it comes time for your affiliates to launch or release things, it should feel like a puzzle piece just fitting in, not like you've now randomly popped up into someone's inbox telling them about someone else who's selling something because you're an affiliate for them, but you haven't actually been in touch with your community or your audience. So... I don't know if that is helpful at all, but when it comes to content that converts, if I could just sum it up, it really is for me about understanding how to speak the language that my people speak, how to show up in the best way that I can for them. And then when I'm thinking about affiliates, thinking about with, like with intention, about like whether or not this really makes sense for a partnership so that I don't feel funny when I'm trying to promote it, because I really do feel like it is an absolute missing piece of their customer journey and one that my offer doesn't fill. You're amazing, Candice. Question for you, the customer journey that you map out, do you map that out for each of the five problems, like a separate customer journey, depending on what their problem is? So Meg, when I speak about the big five, right, that big five is usually that there is an offer, like a program, a coaching, a membership that would speak to those big five. Could you have, I mean, if you had just several offers and several big five problems, that would each be its own journey, right? Correct, correct. Again, I think it's it's like quite tricky to be promoting lots of offers all the time. So like I'm a big fan. I know not everybody does this, but I'm a big fan of like having some kind of model where it would be like, this is the course that I offer as like the entry. And then from here, what would make sense? What would be the next step for someone to take? Okay, so that would be like more like... um maybe like a mastermind kind of thing. And then from there, it would go into like one-on-one coaching so that I'm working with predominantly like three products. Like I'm not working with an arsenal of like 20 things that I'm trying to promote. Mm. So if you are, if you've got a lot of products and you are trying to promote a lot of offers, they have different problems. It becomes really tricky and confusing for your audience as well. Mm-hmm. Would your so preference again, be to be like, to just promote the entry level course and then things like the mastermind and the coaching that's sold to them off of social media, you know, once they're already Um, in your beginner program? I think that's a good, that is a really good question. And I think it just depends on like whether or not, is it, is it in your mind that someone has to have gone through almost that foundational course before they can get into the mastermind, you know, like lots of business owners have that model, which is like only from there, that place, can you actually be invited into the next phase? So they don't advertise that next phase. I do think you can promote more than one offer. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm saying that 
initially, if you're having problems promoting, creating content, converting that content, just focus on one offer. So create content on the big five that one offer speaks to. Get really good at that. And then once you start generating things like social proof and you can have kind of, you know, lots of testimonials and you feel really solid and, you, and you're on your way, then you might be already planning, like, well, gosh, you know, now I've solved this, these problems, but I'm actually seeing like a whole new set of problems are popping up. Oh, you know what? I've had an idea. Maybe I'm going to do a beta for like this next step. And then you could switch into kind of promoting that as well. But for me at the moment, it's like one set of problems with one offer. Focus on that. Get people into that. Map out the journey. See from there, is there anything that your offer is missing? Anything. And, you, and a lot of the time, this, this only happens when you actually start doing it. You know, you're in it and then you're like, oh, my God, so many people are asking for templates. Like, I didn't even think this was a thing. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to start creating templates now. Do I know anyone that has templates? Anyone that I actually also personally like align with on a value and principle level, you know, that I actually would like be proud to be an affiliate for. Yes, I do. Great. I'm going to approach her and say, I've got so many people in my course asking for X, Y, Z. What do you feel about like an affiliate partnership? Mm -hmm. So I, I do feel like I like simplicity, you know, I, mean? I, I like things to be simple and like not chaotic. So I do always advise, keep it simple in the beginning. We all often think, oh, well, if there's a need for that, I'll just go build that out. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Just find an affiliate. Find someone who's already built it like, and is really good at it. And then just focus on delivering your course and promoting your course, converting the content. So, you know, we, I know, like, I was like, well, maybe I should. No, 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 no. I'm not building anything new. <laughs> you know? Wise words, Candice. Wise words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Candice, what I'm hearing from this, and this is like how my brain works and gets super simplified or dumbed down, is that one should really know those five buckets and how it's serving their audience and their ideal customer. And from that place, go find potential collaborations because you know that you're going to be promoting those collaborations and you want it to fit into your, con your already existing content framework and methodology does that make sense well that is so spot on you know and I think again it's 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 like just through trial and error it's like some of us don't even know like I don't know if I have a framework I don't know if I have like a special thing that I bring into this which is it's okay like as you get into it it's worth thinking about like is there anything that I do that I've just taken for granted I don't even think this is like a thing getting to know like what is your position? What is your philosophy? How do you approach teaching your topic? How do you approach helping your people if you're a service provider? You know, what is that framework? What are the things that you're hearing people tell you? Oh, you know, it'd be so helpful. Do you know anyone who does X, Y, Z? You'll almost hear, if you're listening closely, people will almost tell you what's missing from your program. They'll, they'll be asking, like, do you know anyone who does that? Yes, I do. You know, gosh, I never thought about that. I should like approach this person and say, we should we should have like a, either a referral partner kind of relationship or can I be an affiliate for your course? Because everyone in my course is asking about this and I don't want to build it out. You've done it so well. But you have to know what the journey is, what your offer is, solves and where the gaps are going to be so that you can then approach the correct affiliates. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to one thing. You were also talking about when you say offer, you're also talking about service providers offers. Right. In totally. totally. Because your offer is a VIP done in a day community build or a, you know, done in a day sales page build. That's an offer. I can do that for you. Here's my offer. And a lot, of, a lot of service providers don't really see that as an offer, but you can totally create social content around that and positioning that as an offer, as something that you, as, as, that you provide. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Questions. Let's open it up for questions for Candice. Candice, do you have a few more minutes? Because I realize we're right at the hour. Oh, and Candice, I've got that PDF to share with people. Do you yes. want to just quickly say what's on it? Yeah, so like I... I feel like 
I try so hard to simplify what is quite a like deep rabbit hole. So I did put together with, uh, for Meg, I thought if, if anyone is interested, um, just a couple of trainings that speak a little more to like when I was speaking about the two kinds of people in your audience. If you want to learn a bit more about that, there's a training on that, like the two kinds of people in your audience and the two kinds of content strategies that are helpful for those people. So there's like that. Then there's another training on if you're having difficulty with engagement, like no one's commenting, no one's liking. If that's a problem, there's a training I've, I've created on diagnosing engagement problems. So I just put together like a couple trainings in case anybody was interested in, in just, just learning or watching a little more around some of the stuff we were speaking about today. Great. So that will be in the chat. And Scott has a question. Candice, thank you for that. My question is, do you have a video somewhere that tells your five things or your story of five, the five animals, the safari? I want to share it with people because it's so powerful to just say, you know, it's like going on a safari, Candace takes people and there's five main animals. Those are the five problems you should find. <laughs> do you have that somewhere? I'd love to learn it so I could share it with people. Oh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, thanks, Scott. I don't have that yet, but but now I will go and make one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm trying to share Candace's file, but my computer won't won't behave. I might have to send it out with the homework afterwards, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a challenge for the group as we're maybe taking a few more questions here is to put your five buckets in what you think might be your current five in, in the chat. And then Candace, so you, you feel free to have a heyday on that one. So it's yeah. the, are we speaking about the big five court? Yeah, is that possible? Do you think okay, they can do so that? I'm gonna say this, I want, I want yes. Yeah, so the, this is what I would ch challenge everyone to think about. What are my what five biggest and most pressing problems or challenges? in their words that's the challenge in their words how are they describing their biggest problem hmm. and monica i'm thinking about you here because i'm thinking right the problem in your group is they're stressed out right and then you're using your um your amazing creation and handwork to like help undo that so yeah, I don't know. I was curious about if you wanted to speak up to what you think your group's problems are more specifically. Um, what so far I've been focusing actually more on creatives, you know, people who are all, already creative, and also people who say like, "I would love to create, but I'm not creative." Mm -hmm. That's like a very big one that I find. And then the other one is like, oh, I would love to do that, but I don't have the time for it. And then uh, the next one is like, I would love to do this, but where would I wear this? Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, I mean, it's not exactly a t-shirt. It's, it's comfortable as a t-shirt, but you know, you definitely stand out a little bit more. Uh, so that's three that I've come across. Uh, the other one is I don't have the space for it. And um, and then with the professionals, it's um, that I'm just getting to know a little bit. It's um, It's more like the space, you know, like I don't have the space for it. I have kids. Um, they would just mess everything up. Um, hmm. I couldn't wear this to work. Um, so why would I do it? Um, and those are objections, right? Candace, is that what we're talking right. about here? That is exactly what I was going to say. So what Monica is describing are objections that people no, that's not the would big have part. as like, right. So like Monica, like, I'm trying to, because I obviously don't know a lot about what you do, but I'm trying to think like, for example, um, the people you're working with, so they're already creatives. It would be almost like if someone says something like, um, 
I've got no like I, I, it's it's easier for me to talk to you from like my material that I'm very familiar with, right? So the problems people are telling me is like, oh, I post to social media. Um, I, I'm trying so hard, but like no one comments, no one likes anything. It's like, like speaking to dead silence. Okay. That's uh. a problem someone's having with social media, right? So when I'm, when I'm saying think about the big five, it's what are the big five problems your people are having and then how your offer product or service is the solution so it's yeah. a little different. some it's like sometimes somehow i have a i have a problem with seeing the problems that the people have Exactly. Like I think they have more desires than problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's so you know. Monica, like, yeah, I was gonna say Monica's hit the nail on the head. The one is a lot of the time we actually don't know like what the problem is. We we think we know, but when I actually say to people, okay, so now how's your person saying it? They they don't know. So the first is, how do you find out what the big five is? But I absolutely think Monica's also raised a point, which it could also be the five greatest desires, right? So if there really isn't a problem, but it's more around maybe your offer is helping to up level a talent or a skill that is already there, then what I would speak to is the desire, right? So you can hear, it's quite a, I mean, like Courtney, like I was saying, it's quite a lot to talk about, mm -hmm. but, but really to start training your brain to start thinking like around that big five, like what's the big five, but specifically that EQ is the currency of conversion. So how are your people saying it? Talk like your people find the words they are using. And, and then in your content, because I always say, give the people what they want. If they are asking, how do I get more engagement on my posts? I'm going to make a post that says, here's how you get more engagement on your posts. <laughs> give the people what they want. That's how they're going to watch the content. And then in the content, I'm going to pack the gold, which is, now I'm going to tell you what you really need, right? Because the truth is we have to play the game a little bit. Like if I'm going to start creating content around like, you know, here's how to make content convert 5% more than it already is or something. Like, no one's going to stop and read that, okay? They're going to read the stuff that they want the answers to. But in the content, I might offer them something that I know they actually need, you see what I'm saying? So it's a fine line between the big five is all about them, but the content you make must answer that question and then pack in the gold from you, the stuff that you know they need. Mm -hmm. And the gold could be promoting someone else's something or mentioning exactly. a resource. Or, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Cheryl put some really great ones in the chat. Oh, sorry. Monica. Have, what a problem then for, for my niche, which is... Um, teaching women how to use uh, uh, how how to create uh, basically hand painted tops and happy jewelry uh, in order to um, build inner joy and calm while they are creating so um what you say like as a problem what they see what i get a lot as feedback is that I, I when I started out, I thought I was teaching them, you know, like um, how to do this. I was teaching them techniques so that they have tops that make them feel good about themselves. What I hadn't expected was that 100 percent of the people said they have never experienced as much joy and happiness as they have with this course. Mm -hmm. So how. So it's like. In my messaging, I'm using that a lot more because I intuitively do that, you know, like how to create in a way 
that generates that joy and happiness. And most people comment that they have never experienced that in any other workshops because they all focus on a method and a technique. And I show them the technique while focusing on the joy. Mm. Mm. So, so Monica, I think I think it's almost like a byproduct, like they didn't, it's like an unexpected result. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't know that's what was going to happen, but it was like right. the most amazing part of it, right? What I would say is have you you see, like when people are looking for things. If someone's not looking, like, I want to look for a workshop that's going to give me this, like, sense of calm and inner joy. And if they're not looking for that, if you're posting about that, there's, it's not going to land because it's like they don't know that's what they're looking for. They only discover it when they do the workshop. So what, what I would say is to, to use the feedback in, like, your social proof stuff, like in your testimonials and what people say, like I never expected, but in your main messaging, I would say that you need to speak to what people are actually looking for. So what are they looking for? Are they looking for a creative outlet? Are they looking for some like downtime? Like what is it that they're looking for that would get them to consider the workshop? So it's almost like you've got to pull them in with what you know they're looking for. And then the fact that this is an untapped or unexpected result is something that you could speak about in like the after, after the workshop. I would just hosted this workshop and I had five women and like four out of the five women told me that the most unexpected thing happened and this is what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rewatch this again and again you know so that it really clicks yeah I know it, it just takes a bit of practice but I'm also yeah you can come up your questions to me and as much as I can help I'll help oh mm -hmm. wow thank you <laughs> so guys you can all connect with Candace over on collaboration station she is a member with a listing um but Candace I mean what you shared with us today was amazing but for people who want to go further with you on this like how do people find and follow you so I'm um, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, new, also Meg, also new. Uh, my, my collaboration station profile probably needs a bit of an updating. But um, yeah, you can email me, reach out to me. Uh, like Courtney was saying, I have this program that I'm running, which which takes people through exactly like what Monica's struggling with, which is like, what is the big five? How do I put it in their words. We just go through the content. It's it's very hands-on. I, I enjoy working with people kind of like more intimately just getting to know people's businesses and, and who they are and, and that kind of thing. So you can send us a, a smoke signal, any, a pigeon, anything. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, thank you so much, Candice, for coming in oh, and thanks for sharing your wisdom with us. Lots of amazing comments in the chat. I think everyone really enjoyed this session. I know I did. I'm off to map out my customer journey, even though you've probably asked me to do it like five times already. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Candice, I'll do that. But this time I'm really going to do it. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, fantastic. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And Candice, be sure to check out the chat because there's a few more examples in there um, oh, that okay. might prove fruitful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I definitely will. Thank you, Courtney. And then I can always uh, send that person a message or something. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to wrap up here with a few items so that we know what to expect for the grand prize day tomorrow. Ah, deep breaths. Okay, so much integration this week. Okay, day four homework and prizes. So um, we are, let's see here, I'm just gonna skip right to the juice here. You have a collab quiz. Uh, it's actually called, let's see, collab, I think I called it CQ test. Okay, collaboration intelligence test. All right, we just coined that term, so don't steal it. So you're going to post your answers. No, is that right? Did I do this right? 
this was late guys last night. Okay, do the quiz, do the test, okay? Once you complete that, we're gonna get a notification to our email saying that you completed that and then you'll actually get some results. Then you're gonna head over and make a dedicated willing and wanting post in the community. It could be willing or wanting. And let me explain this for a minute. So the willing is, hey, I'm willing to do this type of collaboration. Even better if you can pop like a your profile link or something that we can see, like a, a photo or some sort of visual that's connected to you or your a desire to share. So I'm willing to do XYZ in an XYZ collab, bundle summit, podcast guest, joint webinar, guest speaking, being an affiliate. I bring to the table XYZ who wants to follow up for a conversation. And then a wanting, it would be I'm wanting XYZ for my XYZ collab, like a bundle summit, podcast guest, et cetera. I bring to the table XYZ who wants to follow up for a conversation. Okay, so what we're asking you to do is to put yourself out there a little bit. The, the individual uh, reach outs are really lovely. And this one is more of a putting you out there in our community because we want you, you to get in the habit of doing that. Um, you all now with a free plan, you are able to engage in the community with your desired collaborations. So I recommend using the community hand in hand with the directory. So you go into the directory, you find people, you do some research, you get your ideas for collabs and then pop into the community and get real with us and tell us what it is you're working on and who you want to come into the fold. Feel free to tag people for um, ideas. Okay, uh, that should be a pretty simple one, I think. And then you're going to share your biggest takeaway from the challenge in the day four homework post and what action you plan to take in the next week to start collabing. So whether that's working on a foundational piece or reaching out to somebody, what is that that's going to happen in the next week? And then if you have done those things and you've completed all three, four days of the homework, then you're going to complete the grand prize opt-in form. And you will, through that form, be saying, I'm signing up for the grand prize options, which are, let's see, uh, the, we're, we're actually giving away um, several prizes. The, we're giving away most supportive prize, okay? And this is a one prize um, from, that you will receive from our member hosted prize page. It's a page that we keep for leaderboard prizes and you'll get to choose a prize from there. Then we're doing a prize number one, which is a one-to-one -one collab coaching session, plus the collaboration tracking tracker template by Jody Graham. And for those of you who are at the co-working session, we did a little demo with that tracker. Um, prize number two is one week of collab Voxer support and collaboration tracker template by Jody Graham. That's one week of collab boxer support. That's pretty awesome. And then the grand prize is a monthly connector plan and collaboration tracker template by Jody Graham. And Meg, how long is that uh, monthly connector plan for again? For a year. For a year. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow, that's a big prize. Okay. So <laughs> it's like Oprah, pretty... Courtney. You get a prize and you get a prize and you get a prize. That is so lovely. Okay, so I think it's worth it to do the prize, the homework for today and this week. What do you think? Um, okay, so in order to qualify, you have to have a directory listing. You need to complete the collab um, CQ test. You need to complete all homework assignments and keep note of the uh, time here. It's actually eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight, Eastern. Okay, so that's tonight because we need time to like organize it all for tomorrow and read the submissions and all of that. Um, and then the drawing will take place tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. There was a question in the chat, Courtney, around um, when you say community, what does that mean? Uh, guys, if we ask you to put a post in the community, that is the Facebook group. Uh, right now, we've got some people in the Facebook group who are not Collaboration Station members. Um, but after this challenge ends um, next week, those people who are not with in Collaboration Station on at least a free plan, um, we will take those people out of the Facebook group. So that is usually a member only Facebook group, but this week we've sort of broken all the rules. Um, but if you do wanna stay on with us inside of the community, the Collaboration Station community in the Facebook group that we've been hanging out in this week, please make sure to get yourselves onto that free jumpstart plan. Um, even better if you could put your Facebook profile in your collaboration station listing because if you've got like married name and maiden name and we're like ah oh, it's going to take like a lot of like 
us working it out on a spreadsheet to work out like who's in collaboration station and who's um, in the community and, you know, making sure that the right people get like thrown out. So <laughs> if you could uh, help us out with that, that would be awesome. Yes. And if you know of anyone who who intends to stay in, be sure to ping them so that they can stay in because they will have to find a different way in <laughs> at a later date. Okay, so next is the Collab CQ test in the grand prize opt-in forms. I just wanted you to see what they look like so you know what you know what you're what you're doing tonight. Okay, and then uh, this is this is integration time today. So rather than having a coaching call after this, we want you to use this time to do the homework, do some integration and get ready for day five tomorrow. Day five, we have the wonderful Meg presenting and Meg's gonna share her collab and biz growth journey and talk about your roadmap and how Collaboration Station might be a part of that. And then we have a surprise live from one of our favorite guests this week. And she's gonna hop over into the Facebook group slash community Abra Collabra. Um, and she'll be talking about chat GPT to write sales copy for socials. So that's what we have to look forward to in day five. And then I'm going to go home and cry because this will be over. I think how much, <laughs> how much sleep you'll be able to get after this, Courtney. Next week, you're going to feel like you're on holidays. Well, I, well actually, it is a holiday here next week, which is funny, um, but I'm going to be traveling with my kids to Virginia for a field hockey tournament, like over Thanksgiving, course. like this torture, you know? Um, I love to watch him play, but it's like the worst time. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of told my in-laws, I'm like, I'm going to arrive on Friday night and I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm going to be sleeping for three days. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Aww. So any last questions before we pop off here? I feel we covered a lot today, guys. We're going to let you go. I know it has been a big week uh, this week. And we are excited to see you all back tomorrow for the day five wrap up. And a reminder for the grand prize, you do need to be on this call to win. So uh, we're going to be very strict on that tomorrow. We weren't so strict on that today, but we will be strict on that tomorrow. So if you're not here and your name gets drawn, we will redraw. That is absolutely right. All mm -hmm. right, guys. Cheryl's been getting up super early in New Zealand every um, day this week. <laughs> Fingers crossed for you, Cheryl. <laughs> Oh, Cheryl, I'm impressed. Luckily, your content's so good. It's just waking me right up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect, perfect way to start the day. Yeah. And coffee. <laughs> coffee.